Because think about it. If you're high, you're not having a revolutionary mind. If you're high, you're not thinking about your people. If you're high, you, you're not, you're focused on the kids of this world. The music sounds good to you. you you're going to go ahead and get that burger instead of that salad we just talked about. You're, you're not focused. You're not mentally, you're not there. Because you want to go ahead and you want to be on point. But you're not because you're high. Boss well, man, what would you say? What's going on? What would you say? I'm a Hebrew Israelite. A Hebrew Israelite from what tribe? All praises to the Most High. All praises to so you know what's required of you. Sis, what about you? Come here. What's your name? Sis. I'm Hannah. In a purple shirt. Right. What's your name? Hannah. Hannah. What's your nationality? What would you say? Um, I don't know. So let's look at this sign right here. Do you see? A, do you see a father? What is your father? African American. Okay, so the term app, so that means you would come from the tribe of Judah. All right? Mm -hmm. So when you pray at night to the Lord, that's a beautiful thing to wake up and be an Israelite. You know why? No. Why? Thanks. Give me that in uh, Acts uh, uh, 319. Salvation. Was it 13? Acts 319, I believe. Repentance. Repentance, yes. I got you ready. Read what you got. The book of Acts, chapter 3, and verse 19. Repent ye, therefore, and be converted, uh -huh. that your sins may be blotted out. Because what we need, we need the repentance. We need repentance because there's a kingdom of heaven waiting for us. But it's not given, it's earned. You understand that? So, because think about this. What's that in Revelations 21 and 4? No tears, no sorrow. Okay, we're, we're, we're doing all this for a reason. It's not no just because out of the Bible says to have that faith, to have that understanding. What's that head? What's on that other side of that rainbow? Read what you got. The book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. When was the last time y'all cried? I don't know. It's been a while. I, I know men are tough. We don't cry, right? <laughs> right. When was the last time you cried? Yesterday. Uh, today? Yeah. Okay, it was today. What about you? Uh, a couple months ago. A couple months ago. Right, you tough. But according to the Bible, there's going to be a day coming. We don't have to cry no more ever again. Keep going. And there shall be no more death. No more death. Today, because we went ahead and we sinned against the Lord, He shortened our lifespan to 120 years most. But when you read in the Bible, people lived up to six, seven, eight, nine hundred years. But God's saying now in the kingdom of heaven, hey, there's going to be no more death. Keep going. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. No more pain. Who? Do you work? Do uh, you work? So imagine a wake up and you don't have to punch an alarm clock. You don't have to wake up to an alarm clock. You don't have to have no back pains, no knee pains. You don't have to sweat. There'll be no more pain. Keep going. For the former things are passed away. Because all of that's passed away. We're going to wake up one day. Give me that Psalms 126. It will, it will be as a dream. I want you to understand this. This is Bible right here that we're reading. Psalms 126. We're doing all this for gold. We will be rewarded. If we keep the law, statutes, and commandments, we will be rewarded. I'm showing you the reward right now. Psalms 126. Yes, saw that one. The book of Psalms chapter 126 and verse 1. Uh -huh. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. Because right now, y'all are Zion. When the Lord's going to turn the captivity of Zion, because right now we're in captivity. How do I know? You, you have no alarm clock, right? You're in captivity. You got to pay taxes? You're in captivity. But there's going to be a day where the Lord's going to turn the captivity of Zion. Keep going. We were like them that dream. It's going to be like a dream. Y'all ever had a bad dream where you was like, dang, I'm glad it was a dream. Right? 
But you're like, it felt so real. You're like, dag, I'm glad it was a dream. Check this out. Keep going. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. We're going to be laughing like, yo, <laughs> I was a slave. I had to walk to work like a dream. Imagine that. We're going to wake up like a dream with laughter. Like, yo, I was a slave. Could you believe my forefathers, my, my great ancestors, they was picking cotton? <laughs> wow. Keep going. And our tongue was singing. And we're going to be singing because we because black people, we the best singers. That's we right. the best entertainers. That's right. That's right. Hands down. That's right. They call us for the Super Bowls, for the halftime shows. Right. For any concert. Keep going. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord have done great things for them. Uh -huh. the, Lord has the Lord has done great things for the heathens because if you don't find yourself on this sign right here, you're heathen. I don't see Chinese. I don't right. see Arabs. Right. I don't see whites. Right. Right. So if the Lord done great things for the heathens. Keep going. The Lord have done great things for us uh -huh. whereof we are glad. But the Lord done great things for us where we are now glad. This is what I want. I want to wake up like it was a dream. Like, oh, snap. I was a slave. I had to punch a clock. I had to pay for gas. Right, right. Think about this. You said y'all both y'all have a job. Think about this. The job that you go ahead, they get taxes. You get taxed every week, a paycheck. Then at the end of the month, at the end of the year, you gotta pay for taxes. Then if you buy whatever you have in your bag, if you buy food, you gotta pay for sales taxes. You got a car, you gotta pay for sales taxes, property taxes for that. They tax you for everything. Imagine there's gonna be a day come where you're gonna be collecting taxes. That's right. I wanna live that day. I don't know about you, me, I wanna live that day. But it's for what? It's because of our punishment. When we disobeyed the most high God, he says, yo, I gotta put y'all into sleep. I gotta do a number on y'all. So think about this though. Give me that Psalms 83 and one. How, how much time I got? Okay, give me Psalms 83. I want Psalms 83, because think about this. The last sister was here, black and beautiful, didn't want to hear it. Read what you got. And this is why the other nations, our enemies, done a number on us. I want y'all to understand that. And this is the number right here. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, and verse 1. Keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. In order for us to have peace, war has to come. I don't know what type of Lord that child, you believe in God? You believe in God. So the Lord that we have is a man of war. So Asaph is saying, don't keep silent. We don't want peace right now. We need war. But the war doesn't start with us. The, the Bible says, vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. The more, we leaving that to the Lord to pop it off. Right now, we just moving our servants. So check this out. Read it again. Keep not thy silence, O God. Uh -huh. Hold not thy peace. Right. And be not still, O God. Right. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. You got, who's our enemies? Do you have enemies? Anybody is not us. Okay. What about you? You got no enemies. I have uh, issues with people, but I don't have an enemy. Say that again. Misunderstanding. Say that one more time. I say I have issues with people, but I don't call them enemies, but I just think of it as misunderstanding. What's your name again, sis? Hannah. Shahannah. Hannah. Shahannah. What's Shahannah? According to the Bible, God is saying you have enemies. Did you know that? Yes. According to the Bible, God is saying you have enemies. And it's very descriptive of who your enemies are. Check, read it again. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, uh -huh. and they that hate thee have the enemies hate you. Keep going. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Right. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. You know what's crafty counsel today? Crafty counsel today is saying, hey, I know the Bible says he's a black man with woolly hair. We're just going to put this image out right here and say this is Jesus. No scriptures, no explanation. They're going to believe it. Hey, you know what's crafty counsel to say there is no God. There's a higher power. That's crafty counsel. You know what's crafty counsel to say, um, these are, y'all live here, right? These are uh, low-income houses. You know what? Let's get the man out the house. Let's get the man out the house. Let's give him public assistance. Let's call it WIC. 
women, infants, and children. What the heck? Where's the men? The men need some help too, right? Right? Give us some, right? <laughs> we need some help too. But no. Let's get rid of the men. Let's help the women. That's crafty counsel. Crafty counsel, hey, let's push out Sexy Red, uh, uh, Sukiyana, Nicki Minaj. Let's push that out. That's crafty counsel. Crafty counsel, why is it that a salad will cost $13, right. but a burger is about like 3 or $4? Right. Which one can kill up. you, a salad or a burger? A burger. What? That's crafty counsel. Crafty counsel, hey, let's say you work 40 hours a week, but your paycheck is about three, four hundred. Now, what can you afford now? That burger or that salad? That burger. That bur crafty council. You know what's crafty council? Hey, Breaking why up. is it if you're sick, mm. if you're sick and you got to go to the hospital, they will refuse based on what type of medical, what type of insurance you have? Right. That's crafty council. I'm sick. Or for the burger that I could afford because, hey, that's the money that you gave me. That's crafty counsel. So we could go deep and deep into that rabbit hole. It's just one of many ways of crafty counsel. All right? Keep going. Crafty counsel. Hey, check this out. Crafty counsel. What month is it? What month are we in? No, June. What's the theme of June? Summer. It starts with a P. Blank month. Huh? Pride month. Pride month. That's crafty counsel. Because check this out. When you see a rainbow, what do you think of when you see a rainbow? Well, before the pride stuff, it was after the rain, God, you know, like, how do you say it? Right. When you see a rainbow, what do you think of? A uh, new beginning. What is a rainbow according to the Bible? Crafty counsel. You see, you might know, but she doesn't. So now we got to bring it out. Genesis 9 and 11. Genesis 9 and 11. Again, ways of crafty counsel. Something that God, that symbolizes a rainbow, symbolizes something. But the white man, your enemy, says, you know what? That's not what it's going to mean. I'm, it's going to mean you could be a homosexual. And if you don't accept it, you're a hate group. You won't get that job. You won't go to school. Hey, we might kick you out of these developments. Right. Read what you got. Mm -hmm. The book of Genesis chapter 9 and verse 11. Uh -huh. And I will establish my covenant with you. Uh -huh. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of a flood. Because remember this. In the beginning, the Most High went ahead and flooded the whole earth. He killed the whole earth. Only eight people got saved. And he killed everybody through water. It never rained before. But it started raining and getting higher and higher and higher. 40 days, 40 nights. And people are like, oh, snap. Yo, what is this? And there was no stopping. Now God says, you know what? When I come back, when, I'm, when I destroy the earth next time, I'm not going to do it with water. Guess how he's going to do it? With fire. So think about this. When he destroyed the earth the first time, he said what? And I will establish my covenant with you. Uh -huh. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of a flood. Meaning I'm not going to kill everybody by water no more. Keep going. Neither shall there anymore be a flood to destroy the earth. Uh -huh. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I made between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. So he said, I'm going to shoot to, to, to honor my word. I'm going to show a token. I'm going to I'm going to make this covenant and I'm going to show a token. What is that token? I do set my bow in a cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. So now every time we look at this rainbow is to show, hey, the most high promise he's not going to flood this world. He's not going to destroy this world with water no more. But wait a minute. The white man is saying, I'm going to do crafty counsel. This rainbow right here, you're not going to know it until, how old are you? 34. And that's not to shame you. But in 2024, I could be old as 34, and I will not know what a rainbow means. That's crafty counsel.
Go back now to the Psalms. That's right. The book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse 3. Uh -huh. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people uh -huh. and consulted against thy hidden ones. Because we're the hidden ones. We don't know our nationality. We don't know our identity. We don't know where we come from. Right. What does the Lord God require of us? Teach I all. just asked the last sister, yo, what knowledge that you have that you can spare? I don't have the time. The, the A, they done a number on us. Keep going. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. And it succeeded. <coughs> it happened and it succeeded. Because today in 2024, we don't know who we are. But I can say it succeeded, but not really. Because today you have the prophets out here in purple telling y'all how special you are. Understand that. Keep going. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Because think about this. If I cut y'all off from y'all knowing who y'all are, I won, I succeeded. Now, if y'all know who y'all are, well then dag, I'm in trouble. Because y'all gonna wake up. Y'all gonna hold back your money. You're not gonna go ahead and stuff your dollars in strippers or go to the strip clubs or buy cigarettes and weed and black and miles. No, y'all gonna put y'all money together. Y'all gonna start a community. Y'all gonna fund your own colleges. We don't want that. Right. The, the black the dollar is going to go circulate in the black community. We don't want that. So let's cut y'all off from being a nation. Let's make it higher for you to get that degree. To go ahead and get that scholarship. Hey, you want that scholarship? Jump, nigga, jump. You can't jump. Nah, I ain't give you that scholarship. How fast you could run. So wow. So my physical ability is going to determine my academics. Crafty counsel. Hey, because nowadays the sisters have low self-esteem, so you know what? This is what I want you to do. I want you in that blonde hair. I want you in that tight dress. That's that crafty counsel. All right? That, is that it? We got verse 5. Go ahead. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Because all these other nations, the Chinese, the Arabs, the whites, they're confederate against us. We're the ones that make the most, but spend the most. How? We're the ones that come out there and say black lives matter, but black lives don't matter to black people. That's right. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going I'm to leave y'all with something good. I'm going to leave y'all with something good. Give me Psalms 149. Are you ready for this? What's your name again? Ishmael. Ishmael. Ishmael? Okay. I'm going to leave off on a good note, Ishmael. Because remember... We want to see heaven, right? And also the man is what? The Lord is a man of war. So I'm going to leave on a good note right here. Psalms 149, I want the whole chapter. The book of Psalms chapter 149 and verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Because the radio today that they play is garbage. I don't want to hear no Pound Town. I don't want to hear no Sukiyana. We're going to be praising to the Lord with a new song. Well, hey, what's that new song? Come on. In his praise in the congregation of the saints, let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Because right now we're not joyful. Black people are joyful in ignorance. Black people are going to be joyful for Juneteenth. That's not nothing to be joyful about. Because if you celebrate Juneteenth, but then you go ahead and celebrate 4th of July, man, I don't even know what to say to you. Right. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to you. Black people need anything to come together and smoke weed and get high and rejoice. This is not the type of rejoicing that the Bible's talking about. All right? Keep going. Let them praise his name uh -huh. in a dance. Let them sing praises. Because black people, we the best dancers as well, too. Bobby Brown, come on now. Y'all know about him. I'm showing my age. I'm showing my age. Bobby Brown, Chris Brown. We, we, we the best dancers. We the best singers. We the best dancers. Keep going. Let them sing praises unto him with a timbrel and harp. Uh -huh. For the Lord have taken pleasure in his people. Right. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Right. Let the saints be joyful and glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. So again, remember I said that alarm clock in heaven, you won't have no alarm clock no more. But you're going to wake up high in your beds and do what? Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So we're going to wake up on our, bread, on our beds singing, but with a weapon in our hand. 
<laughs> right? That's crazy. That's what we just read. Sis, are you paying attention? We're going to wake up upon our beds, happy, singing, but with a weapon in our hand. What's that weapon for? To execute vengeance. To what? To execute vengeance upon the heat. What's, what's another word for vengeance? Revenge or payback. That's right. All right? We're going to wake up with payback on our mind, and we're going to be smiling with white, nice white teeth. Keep going. Upon the heathen. And upon the, who? Upon the heathen. Uh -huh. And punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains. And what, listen, this is the mindset that we're going to have. But we can't have this mindset today until we come back to God's laws. So we're going to have weapons in our hand. We're going to put those people in chains that put us in chains. This is Bible prophecy right here. Right. That's something to smile about. I don't know about you, but I want that thing. Go ahead. To bind their kings with chains uh -huh. and their nobles with fetters of iron. Uh -huh. To execute upon them judgment written, dishonor, have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. And praise ye the Lord for that thing. Because we're dealing with a just God, with a righteous God. But now, how can we get that? Second, that last one, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. Or it might be, uh, I think it's so, when your obedience is fulfilled. 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10, and I think it's verse 5 or 6. Okay. Might be 1st or 2 Corinthians. When your obedience is fulfilled. So, as we close up, as we wrapping this up, you got to remember, what does the Lord God require of you? Because you said, hey, you're a Hebrew Israelite, all praises to the Most High, but then what's next? You live around here? You drive? You don't drive yet? Okay. You work though? Okay. Well, eventually, you want to start watching classes, you want to go ahead, get in tune, get yourself built up. It's much more, to knowing is but half the battle. It's action behind it. You understand? How old are you? Okay, so you're still a young man. So knowing is but half the battle. And I'm telling you, Satan's going to come on you hard to try you and see if you're about that life. If you're about this word. All right? Okay. Is that it? Mm -hmm. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. To have that payback. To be ready to have that payback one. When your obedience is fulfilled. Only way you could get that payback is when your obedience is fulfilled. Whatever it is that you're battling, whether it's smoking weed, cigarettes, a whole mongering, you have to put that aside first and say, hey, you know what? I see you got a bed all praises. You're not going to shave it off. I'm going to wear fringes with a border blue. I'm going to keep the Lord's Sabbath days. I'm, I'm not going to celebrate Juneteenth, 4th of July. When, you're, when your obedience is fulfilled, then I see you can wake up with that sword in your hand, singing and dancing, putting them in chains. Putting them in bondage. My thing is, like, I already don't celebrate a lot of the holidays, like none of them really. But okay. My thing is, is just the whole smoking and drinking. Have you have you went over that with the smoking? Uh, a little bit. I'm not sure. Read it again, First Corinthians three sixteen. Think about this. Is that your body? Well, I mean, it's God's body. It's God's body. So think about it. It's like you ever lent somebody something. Okay, like let's say you lend somebody like your car, or let's stick with a car. I lend you my car. If I put it, if I put it on a half a tank, I want it back at a half a tank. If not at a full tank, because I'm doing you a favor, right? If I'm giving you my car and if it's clean and vacuum, I expect it the same way. So now with our bodies, if we go ahead and if we get stuff like tattoos, if we smoke weed, how do you think God feels about that? Check this out. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. You are the temple of God. You're God's creation. You're an Israelite on top of that. Damn. That's twice a blessing. Keep going. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Spirit of God is dwelling in you because right now you're hearing this word. And I know it's cutting, but you're hearing this. Hey, God's dealing with you. Keep going. If any man defile the temple of God. How do we defile our temple? Having casual sex, smoking weed, getting tattoos, eating defiled food. That's defiling our temple. Keep going. 
him shall God destroy. God's going to destroy you if you keep it up. Ishmael, you said Ishmael, right? God's going to destroy you if you keep it up. Because you want to think about it. That's not your body. That's God's. And then I, I, why, why would you, why do you say you smoke weed? Stress. Okay, with this Bible right here, when you read this Bible, this right here is a stress, a stress reliever. You want that? Go ahead. This right here is a stress. I used to smoke weed. I used to smoke weed for 10 years. So you're not saying all of us, <laughs> we all used to smoke weed. Yeah, that's right. All of us used to smoke weed. So what you're saying is not new to the ears. I could correct, I could relate to you. This right here is the stress reliever though. Check this out. The book of wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 and verse 12. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. Because what we'll take also, we'll rely on medication. We'll take depression pills or any type of medicine to relieve or numb the pain. But the Bible saying, no, it wasn't the, read it again. For it was neither herb nor modify the herbs, plaster, that restored them to health. Uh -huh. But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. Because this word can heal you. If you open your mind and if you believe in this word, this word can heal you. Right. But we cannot go ahead and rely on the drugs or, or, or what's used to destroy us to, to help us heal us. No. Why do you think it's called getting high? Because you're not in your right state of mind. That's right. You're off balance. You're not on your square. Read what it, what it says to uh in, in Titus. I'll get, I'll get you. This is how the Bible commands us men. Because think about it. If you're high, you're not having a revolutionary mind. If you're high, you're not thinking about your people. If you're high, you, you're not, you're focused on the cares of this world. The music sounds good to you. you you're going to go ahead and get that burger instead of that salad we just oh, talked no. about? You're, you're not focused. You're not mentally, you're not there. Because you want to go ahead and you want to be on point. But you're not because you're high. Check this out. This is what the Bible says. The book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 6. Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. That's a hard thing for us men to do. Now you could drink, but you could drink in moderation. Don't drink and get drunk. Keep going. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Do you want to say, yo, Ishmael, yo, that's a good role model for me. I want my son to be like you. I, I can't wait to see what you're gonna grow up and be like. Nah, nah, look at this high nigga. He's zooted right now. He smell like ganja and all of that. You wanna be known for the man that they look at for knowledge, not the man that they look at to roll up. Right. Alright? Keep going. And all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Because you wanna show your pattern of good works. We need role models. We need men that can help build up the next generation. That's the pattern of good works. But nowadays, uh, if you don't smoke weed, you lame, you corny, you whack, you feds. Because I don't smoke weed no more. Keep going. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincer sincerity. Uh huh. You want to be sincere. When you pray to the Lord, you want to pray to the Lord God, please remove this spirit from me. Please, I want to get right. I want to get right with you, Lord. Please remove this spirit from me. And also, I, I can help you with one more way you can do that. Matthew 17. 17 and 20. Like I said, I, I would smoke weed for 10 years. All of us, we all smoked weed before. And it wasn't just within a snap of a finger. Stop. We prayed to the Lord like we just read it. We were sincere. And the Lord took that spirit away from us. All praise to the Most High for that thing. Give me that 17. Uh, start at, yes, yeah, start at 20. The book of Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say it to you. Start at 16. Verse uh, 15. Verse 15. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic. A lunatic means to have many spirits on him. To deal with smoking weed, that's in the midst of witchcraft. Keep going. And sore vex, for all times he falleth into the fire, uh -huh. and off into the water, and I brought him to thy disciples. So this parent was praying for his son and saying, yo, my son is a lunatic. He's, he's trying oh. to commit suicide, walking into the fire. He has a lot of spirits on him. Keep going. And they could not cure him. No one could cure this man. Keep going. Then Jesus answered and said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? 
how long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Uh-huh. And Jesus wrote. So Christ is saying, yo, no one can hear this boy. Hey, come here, bring him to me. Because y'all faithless. Y'all don't have the faith. Keep going. And Jesus rebuked the devil and departed out of him. And a child was cured from that very hour. So Jesus went ahead and rebuked the devil. And then all those sins was gone from that lunatic, from that young boy. Keep going. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? So now the disciples, and they had power. They said, yo, Christ, why we couldn't cure this man? Why we couldn't help him? Why we couldn't cast out those devils? Keep going. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove ye to yonder place. So the first thing you want, you want to ask the Most High to increase your faith. Increase your knowledge, increase your faith. Because you, to have that faith, you know what, I think I can stop smoking. I think I can, you could drink, but if it's a struggle for you, I wouldn't drink either. But, but pray and say, hey, I hope that he removes this spirit from me. Have that faith first. Keep going. And it shall remove, uh -huh. and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing's impossible to you, Ishmael. Keep going. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting. Because if you can restrict your body for 24 hours, no food, you need food to survive, right? You need food to live. But if you could di discipline yourself and say, you know what, I'm not gonna eat. From sundown to sundown, I'm not gonna eat and I'm gonna pray and fast. And I ask that he increase my faith and take away this drug addiction from me, he will do it. I'm, I'm proof, we are all proof. Like I said, we all used to smoke weed. But we pray and we fast and the Most High took that spirit away from us. All right? But I would say, hey, look, today you've been marked. And I, I pray, I hope that that spirit's gone. And we see you in our school. We see you in our congregation, all right? What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with roles.